Right. Uh, can everyone hear me okay? Can you guys hear me in the back? Is everybody enjoying uh, GERCON so far? Yes? Good, good. Um, thank you guys. <clears throat> I really appreciate you taking some time to uh, to listen to me today. Um, I know for me personally, uh, around 3.30 in the afternoon, I, I can't think of a better time that, that I'd rather take a nap. So um, <laughs> I'm going to do my best to keep you guys awake here. I, I, don't, know, I don't know if that's the case for you, but... Uh, uh, no promises, but I'll do my best. So um, my name is Justin Beard. I'm a systems administrator, uh, systems engineer actually from uh, from CyberArk. Used to be a systems administrator, um, and uh, not not Garrett Lansing, by the way. Um, if it goes badly, just blame Garrett. If it goes well, I'll take the credit. Uh, but I'm here to talk to you a little bit about privileged account security uh, and why we think that's so important, um, and and really just how following good security practices around uh, managing your privileged accounts in the enterprise uh, is is just key, and how it can you know prevent the bad guys from sneaking in and uh, and making off with your bread and butter. So, you know, I've I've actually noticed lately it seems like more and more people are becoming kind of more familiar with the concepts around privileged account security. So it's kind of less of an uphill battle explaining what that is. Uh, I'm sure many of you in this room are already familiar with the problems and challenges that we're addressing uh, and, and why that is so important. But today I'm going to talk for about 25 minutes uh, and, and I've got someone in here to keep me honest. Uh, we'll keep it down to 25 minutes about what we at CyberArk think privileged account security is and uh, how we approach it. And by the way, if anyone has any questions, um, feel free to raise your hand and, and stop me at any point. Um, and and I'll, I'll try to stop if I see your hands. So, preventing the theft of highly privileged credentials, uh, we found is really key to short-circuiting the majority of today's sophisticated cyber attacks. Um, and, and the rise of these advanced persistent threats is really per, uh, prompting a lot of organizations um, to, to really focus in and think about uh, privileged access controls. Um, and, and quick, before I kind of launch into my, uh, my talk here, a little background on CyberArk. We are first and foremost a security company. Uh, we're also the only security company um, that's entirely focused uh, on eliminating the most advanced cyber threats, and those are the threats that are using insider privileges uh, to attack the heart of the enterprise. Uh, so we've led the market now in proactively stopping these types of attacks for almost two decades now. We've been around since 1999, and around 3,000 of the world's leading companies um, trust us to protect them in this area. Um, so to kind of uh, position the problem for you, uh, privileged credentials are everywhere. Uh, every organization has systems, right, platforms, appliances. Um, every technology has some way built into it for somebody to log in and, and maintain it, support it, modify it. Uh, every, every technology has that. So the accounts that have the power to make these changes are, of course, the privileged accounts with which we're concerned. Um, in the wrong hands, these are the accounts that have the power to cause great harm to any organization. Uh, so where are your privileged accounts? I'm sure you can think of some obvious examples, but they're everywhere, right? They're in every piece of hardware, every piece of software. Uh, I saw a guy dem demonstrating, you know, the ability to uh, uh, hack a, I think it was a 2012 Ford Focus out there. I mean, they're, they're just everywhere. So, you know, they exist across the entire IT stack. I mean, we're talking... Um, databases, applications, endpoints, uh, you know, network devices. A privileged user, um, the way we define that, a privileged user is any user that has the capability to um, <coughs> change or change, alter, or impact uh, the the organiz or the operation the operational service uh, of a business process. So, uh, in any organization, this includes not only system administrators. Um, but also maybe some less obvious examples, things that you may not consider privileged accounts like, uh, you know, some of your business users, some of your more powerful business users, um, some of your developers, of course, and uh, maybe even social networking account managers, for example. Um, so once you really take the time to kind of carefully consider what might fit that definition of a privileged account in your organization, typically that number ends up being somewhere in the neighborhood of three to four times, believe it or not, three to four times the number of employees uh, in the typical organization. 
Uh, and, you know, again, just think about it. How many desktops are there? How many servers? How many databases, network devices, you know, other, other infrastructure components? Uh, there's a lot out there. The 30-day cybersecurity sprint memo that was released uh, after the OPM breach, um, this is kind of just some highlights from that memo. Um, it's, it could almost just be a, a summary of the whole thing, right? There's a lot of words in that thing. Um, I, I read a little bit more of it, and there was just kind of a lot of similar language. Um, but that's, those are some highlights there for you. Uh, and that's, from, that's available on whitehouse.gov if you want to look it up for yourself. But this was developed, of course, in response to that OPM breach. And um, <clears throat> you'll notice the focus on privileged users, on privileged functions, privileged accounts, privileged user activities. Uh, there's a lot of language around privilege. Um, so just kind of highlighting the importance that that played in that breach. And, you know, the officials that are responsible here do recognize the key role of privilege um, in that breach. And they recognize that protecting those privileged accounts is the key to preventing future breaches. So the reason that so many attackers are consistently successful in not only breaching the perimeter, you know, at least 90% of organizations have been breached at least once. Uh, that's an old number. I'm sure it's more by now. But they also persist and they move laterally through the environment. Um, and they use privileged credentials to get it done. And it's more specifically your privileged credentials that they're using once they've reached your perimeter and they're in your environment. Um, so more specific, uh, you know, the reason that they, uh, or when they use your credentials, rather, I should say, they look like you to your defense systems. So that's the challenge. I recently um, dusted the cobwebs off uh, Blade Runner <laughs> and watched that. Um, it actually struck me that this year, 2016, was the year that the Nexus 6 replicants uh, were produced in the, in the four uh, uh, Blade Runner universe. And it struck me that the number one thing that made the uh, replicants so dangerous um, even though they had superior strength, superior intelligence, that wasn't the number one thing that made them so dangerous. The number one thing was uh, that they looked, they looked like us, they looked like the humans. Um, so, you know, enter Rick Deckard here, only the most discerning experts uh, could tell them apart from, from the real humans. So that's the same advantage that attackers have uh, against your enterprise when they break in and they steal your credentials is, you know, they look just like you for all intents and purposes. Um, I know we have some uh, uh, capture the flag events going on here. Uh, one thing that commonly happens, I haven't seen whether they've actually done this at this, at this particular uh, hacking conference yet, but a lot of, th one, one thing they'll sometimes do is pass around credentials, right, to the various vendor booths as kind of an incentive to get people to stop by the booth. And, that's because to be successful in capture the flag, to be able to breach or hack something, having those credentials is, is key. So it's been, it's been well documented, actually, that privileged accounts are required to carry out a breach. And, it, and just put yourself in a hacker's shoes. Many of you here don't, don't really have to. <laughs> that's not much of an effort for you, right? You're already there. Need access to a particular network segment, or do you want to change firewall rules to enable you know, external communication if you're doing, you know, data exfil. Uh, do you want to gain access to a domain controller? Do you want to dump a database table uh, to capture maybe a competitor's customer list? Unprotected, unmonitored privileged accounts are going to be the key uh, for you. So the quote here on the slide uh, from Mandiant says that 100% of the breaches that they investigated involve stolen credentials um, so what we've found in the breaches that we've analyzed is that whenever possible, the attacker does go after those privileged credentials uh, because those are the keys that provide the access that they need and gives them that control over the IT infrastructure. Um, so we've kind of made the case for privileged accounts needing to be protected. It's a very critical challenge that we need to solve if we want to create measurable security and prevent an advanced persistent threat from gaining a foothold. So the diagram that you're looking at here is the life cycle of a typical breach. And this isn't just something we threw together. 
Um, this concept was originally based on investigation by Lockheed Martin after the uh, massive cyber attack that they suffered. And it's been refined by other organizations, including ourselves and our security partners, um, just based on studies of numerous breaches. So escalation of privilege, as you can see, is always critical in this attack chain in order for it to be successful. So this occurs not only toward the beginning, uh, soon after where the breach first occurs, but it also typically repeats over and over again as part of that loop that's in the middle. And that's happening as attackers move laterally through the organization after they've managed to uh, do that initial breach of the perimeter. And that's, that's when they gain control over you know, endpoints, usually escalating to servers, and ultimately, typically, they're escalating to domain controllers. That's very often what they're after. So <clears throat> this is a process that, according to firms that investigate breaches, such as FireEye and uh, Mandian, as I mentioned a minute ago, it takes over 200 days on average. So 200 days over six months where an attacker is just sitting in your environment and they're doing nothing but moving laterally, you know, grabbing hashes of credentials and, and trying to escalate their privilege, moving to different systems within the organization, just looking for ways to escalate their privilege over six months. So how do we solve this problem? How do we address this? So at CyberArk, privilege account security, as I mentioned, is really just all we do for a living. That's it. So our mission is threefold. <clears throat> First part of the mission Control. We want to provide solutions that give you full control over your privileged accounts. So you decide exactly who gets access to privileged accounts and when they get access, uh, what type of access they get. Also, you don't have to show them uh, the password to every account that they have access to. <clears throat> so do you allow the user to view the password or do they just click a button and you know, once they've authenticated to the solution, do they just click a button to get an instant connection to a target with those credentials being programmatically entered for them? It actually makes it easier for them, uh, but more secure at the same time. Do you change passwords after each use? Maybe they do need to see the password, but maybe you want to give them a password that's going to be useless an hour later so they don't keep it on a sticky note stuck to their monitor. And finally, you know, you can enforce manager approval. Um, you could have even multiple levels, multiple tiers of approval if you want to. Uh, we basically put the control back in your hands uh, where it belongs. Our next, the next part of the mission is visibility. So we want to provide your organization with full visibility. In an ideal world, we have a report that tells us everything everyone did with every privileged account in the organization. CyberArk has the tools to provide that ideal scenario. And, you know, can we just agree? I mean, the number one thing that an attacker wants is a privileged account. Uh, a CISO, actually from a large organization that I spoke to, uh, he just told me, you know, if I, if I just had a list, if I had a list of every powerful or privileged account throughout my organization, I would sleep better at night. I would, I would know that our security posture was increased and improved just from having a list of all those privileged accounts that exist in my organization because he didn't even know how many were out there. And of course that's something we can do, uh, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. And then, excuse me just for a minute. Last but not least is detection. So let's make sure that the account is being used for its intended purpose. Let's alert the responsible parties uh, when we detect possible misuse. And beyond detection, let's actually set up proactive protection and, and automatic mitigation when a potential threat is detected. Um, for an example, if an, if an attacker initiates an overpass the hash attack, uh, that's something that we can detect going on. Uh, our privileged threat analytics actually has uh, network sensors that do deep packet inspection. They can detect that the attack is happening, and then we can send a message over to the vault and say, you know, hey, we detected that this account has been compromised, it's being used in overpass the hash attack, change the credential. Um, and that, that ends the attack right there. So 
So this is what the attack cycle looks like with CyberArk in the picture. By implementing CyberArk, organizations everywhere are breaking the attack chain here at the critical point of privilege escalation, rendering these uh, advanced threats basically null and void at that point. I mean, there's a reason that CyberArk's usually the number one or number two call after a major security incident. Uh, the more power that an attacker has, the more damage that uh, he or she can create. And that's why, you know, again, the first thing an attacker wants to execute an attack is a privileged account. So we do have some recommendations. We're not just here to scare you today. Um, these are our primary recommendations uh, to mitigate some threats. So we want to assign a unique password on every endpoint for built-ins. Establish uh, credential boundaries on the domain, you know, following Microsoft best practices, tier 0, tier 1, tier 2. One-time passwords, again, the passwords that rotate every time they're used. Isolate your high-value assets. We're talking about um, domain controllers, uh, anything that's subject to any specific um, compliance standards like PCI, SOX, or HIPAA, and really anything in your environment that's being accessed by a less trusted uh, third party, like a contractor or a vendor. And finally, monitor the behavior that's going on. Look for changes in behavior uh, for common privileged accounts and sensitive assets, um, especially indicators of credential theft, which we're able to, again, not only detect but mitigate. And enable your reactive countermeasures is kind of what I just described um, with, with uh, automatic response to attacks. So um, just as, as privileged accounts are the keys to controlling an enterprise, um, at CyberArk we do provide the keys to securing them. So we have the most mature, most comprehensive set of tools available in the privileged account security uh, space today. So now there's a lot here. We don't expect uh, organizations to boil the ocean and do everything at once, um, but we do encourage a phased approach. Um, so I won't go individually through each aspect of the solution, but it's there at the bottom for you to see. The main reason I just want to show you this is because of an important consideration. When you're considering a solution for privileged account security, um, again, you don't want to do everything on day one. Uh, and, and you know, you may want to vault your passwords. You may want to do session monitoring today. Uh, maybe removing hard-coded passwords from applications is not part of your list of use cases today, but it could be down the road. Um, so we think that it makes sense to start with a solution that has all the capabilities, not just that you need now, but that you may need in the future, so you're not piecing together a solution from multiple vendors um, later on. So just some takeaways I want to leave you with. What do you actually need to do now? Um, step one is identify. Uh, you can schedule an hour with me. Actually, we have a free tool, and I can, I can run through that with you. I do it all the time. Um, and it's called Discovery and Audit, or, or DNA for short. So we do a DNA scan. We can identify just all those critical account details. Where do they live? Um, which ones are out of compliance? Where are their vulnerabilities? Uh, and, and things that we need to address. Step two is change. So identify the critical platforms, find the low-hanging fruit and the quick wins, and uh, start getting those sensitive passwords changed to unique, complex, and random values um, that are not, you know, an administrator going through and giving all your root accounts the same password, um, and do that with the Enterprise Password Vault. Step three is isolate. Nail down your domain controllers and any other juicy targets, uh, your crown jewels, if you will, Determine which systems are in scope for those audit requirements I mentioned, things like PCI or SOX or HIPAA and so forth. And then determine which systems are going to be accessed by those less trusted third parties. Uh, anything that falls into at least one of those three categories really should be isolated behind a secure jump server that records all the sessions that take place on any of these targets. Um, so focus on nailing down those three areas and you can really just breathe easier uh, knowing that your security posture has been dramatically and drastically improved. Any questions?
All right. Thanks, everyone.